Uh, the Town of Palmyra Board Meeting, February 12, 2024, 6 p.m. Palmyra Town Hall, W1125, Highway 106, Palmyra. Uh, certification <coughs> compliance with open meetings law. It was posted on the website and the Town Hall Board. Roll call. Potter? Here. Martins? Here. Kajinski? Here. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Approved minutes from January 8, 2024. Motion to approve. Second. I've got a motion to approve <coughs> a second to approve the uh, meeting minute, minutes. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, approved bills is presented. So, yeah, so again, we will have a report from the tax account and the general fund, and I'm going to do the tax account first because it's shorter. Um, Todd Burgess got a refund for uh, $24.24. Mark Hadlett got a refund for $463.90. His was a refund that he had, I had sent out back in 2022. He never got it, never cashed it. And since we're doing an audit, I did a review uh, of all the checks that are left that have not been cashed because eventually if we don't clear them up now, those checks have to go to the state for unclaimed funds. Um, so I worked with Mark and he did not get it, um, and so I cut him a new check. Uh, for Citizen State Bank, I needed new deposit slips for the tax account, so that was $76.89. Penny Sergio got a refund of $50.22. Landmark Credit Union, this was another one that um, they, I had sent them a refund check last year and they never got it um, for $5,801.30. And Thomas Breyer got a refund for $749.63. So then out of the general fund, Robert Clark overpaid his dog payment our dog tags for $10, so I sent him a refund. We Energies um, was $359.55. Kate Demler, I also found a check for her where she had not cashed it. It was uh, sent out last Ju uh, July for $24. Checks for less, I had to get a new batch of checks because with the bank being bought out a while ago and um, they're going with the new routing number, um, I had to get new checks for the general fund. The tax account is fine, but the general fund. Anyway. Question: For Citizens Bank, that model? Yeah. Oh. From, I don't remember. I sent you the letter that we got from them, but it was a while ago. And now that bank that bought them says now you have to use our routing number, not your routing number. But it was in that letter that I sent. Um, that was seventy-two dollars and ninety-five cents. Mark Montgomery was another person I found a check that he had not cashed uh, for $48. Oh, and he also, um, I went through and reviewed his uh, invoice that he had given me for an election expense and I missed an hour of time, so I paid him uh, the $12 that we owed him. Quadiant Finances, uh, that's our um, stamp machine. I needed postage for the property taxes, that was $450. Bright speed for the internet was $118.69. QuickBooks for the yearly uh, renewal was $684.70. LRS was $6,749.98 for garbage and $3,083.39 for recycling. We Energies for street lighting was $62.18. We got a PILT payment, payment in lieu of taxes from the state, and we had to give out uh, most of it. We got, I think it was like $19,000 and we got to keep $2,000. We had to give $10,467.50 of that to the Meyer Eagle School District, $440.70 to the Waukesha County uh, Technical School, uh, the clerk's salary plus postage um, <coughs> for property taxes and 
sending out uh, W-2s and W-3s was $3,360.37. Martin's salary was $230.87. Uh, Gajewski's salary was $230.87. Sauter's salary plus um, registration for, uh, was that a Wisconsin Towns Association? Yeah. yeah. Was $434.40. Our uh, assessor first installment of the year was $3,125. Powers Memorial Library, the donation was $3,000. Uh, Jefferson County Clerk, the uh, county has redone all of the absentee ballots and or envelopes. There's there's an inner envelope and an outer envelope. Um, they put us into a grant, and so instead of I think a hundred and some dollars, um, we had to pay them six dollars and thirty two cents. Laying Enterprises for signs was fifty seven dollars and sixty cents. Uh, Jefferson County Highway signs and uh, Brian was $1,857.98. Um, the Jefferson County Treasurer, we owed them for that payment in lieu of taxes, $5,950.57. Northwest Services, we have one uh, check that covered three invoices for $17,175.50. And then there will be a second check that will cover two invoices for $47,245. Question for you. Yes. Um, these refunds or items we're catching up that are yep. one, two, through potentially three years old, yep. um, are they accounted for liability-wise on the, uh, in the in the books so that, or are we just out $6,500 to $7,000 that we have? We avoid the first check. Um, and then it makes an adjusting record, um, so that's zeroed out. And then we owe, I wrote the check for the amount that we owe them. Right, but have we accounted for that, that that was never pulled out of our account? Were these surprises to us? They, it happens. I'm surprised that we have so many of them. I think there was uh, two tax checks and two checks that went to our election uh, workers. And that's my next question, whether it be the auditors or um, we should be following up with these people within a couple months of tax mm -hmm. refunds going out so it's not years later and we're having to pay it and we potentially didn't have it in the budget. Mm -hmm. So Well, the, the tax refunds aren't necessarily part of your budget. They're part of the money that we've taken <coughs> in for the tax payments. That's, that's fine. Yep. We shouldn't let this we should be looking at this, and if something is three months old and they haven't cashed it, we should be contacting them to say, hey, are you going to cash this? That's a policy we can put in place. I think yep. we should. Yep. Anything else? <laughs> Sauter? Aye. Martins? Aye. Kajewski? Aye. Public comment, anybody signed up over there? Mm -hmm. you want to please, you know, Paul Erke. Yeah, Paul Erke, then 1466 Zion Road. And I noticed on uh, under new business, item nine, it says discussing discussion and possible action on the concerns of the ditching and the attention ponds in the airport. Well, I thought when those were set up, it's just clarification, I'm sure you'll be able to confirm it later, but I thought they were set up with uh, infiltration ponds. Well, we'll, we'll uh, I brought that up. We got the uh, chairman of the airport commission sitting right here, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. It, it, it is. There's a quite a difference between infiltration ponds and retention ponds. So. Well, t tell me about it. Paul. No, I certainly you know about it. You're probably taking a look at it. So, Paul has he uh, explained it to me. He explained it as infiltration ponds. Infiltration. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not really supposed to be clean water. No, it's like 24 hours of the drain out. And there's a difference because the tension ponds can regain water right. year round. Yeah. So, so, it's so maybe there was <coughs> misstated on the, uh, on the input. It's an infiltration water. Yeah, it's not a retention pond. So maybe there's not as much of a concern as I've done all of it. <coughs> no, that's all. Right. 
Thanks. Reports, Treasurer. Um, in the general fund, um, we had $87,883.83. In the tax account, we had $1,085,330.10. In the LGIP general, $521.65. In the LGIP fire and EMS, $2.86. The airport had $34,915.40, and the LGIP airport had $0.55. Cents. I will file that. Clerk's report. Oh, one more. Want to see gentlemen any questions? No. Uh, we have the audit uh, on February 21st, next Wednesday. I think we start at 9 in the morning. And it typically goes pretty much all day long. Um, they usually have about three, at least three people in um, here on site. And then um, because uh, the clerk's term, clerk treasurer's term expires on 331, that's why we have uh, the number 12 and 13 on the agenda. Questions? Highway. Bob from Northwest. How are you doing tonight? Tired. <laughs> well, I will see you do a good job on Tamarack Road. Something wrong. Um, concerns? No. The only thing we got, we, we're doing Young next. We'll be on Young tomorrow. I talked to him about Young Road where several trees were girdled around, at minimum, he's going to run over here and take those down, because they're going to go down. Okay? And then that, that's basically it over there. But they're cut, they're going to go over. Whoever cut them knew they were going to go <laughs> over sometime. So, anything else that you'd like to ask, Bob? Yeah, I would. Um, I was going to bring this up at the Blue Spring Lake District uh, portion, but I'm not sure if you would still be here. Um, I've had a lot of calls from people very disappointed. I drove around the lake, so I totally get what they're saying. It's in front of my yard, too. There's all kinds of gravel spit up on the yards. The yards right next to the road dug up, more so than we've seen in years past. Mm -hmm. So I think um, Ron or yourself or somebody should go out and take a look and see what they can do to potentially you. Have we already been on top of that? Yeah, and not as of, I just drove around on, was it Friday or Saturday? Right. Well, right after, we, we know what happened, and uh, it was a new driver that we had out there working, and there was an issue with being the road, being narrow. He pulled off the road in a couple different spots, letting cars go by, which he probably shouldn't have done. Um, we did go out that evening and did some try to fix up what we could, and then the big snow came. So there really wasn't anything we could do until the snow melts. So if it's a, if it's a concern, obviously it's a concern, we'll take care of it. You know, but I would go out and drive around again. I mean, yeah. it's not one or two spots. It's oh, fairly consistent around the lake. Right. There was uh, a lot of areas where uh, there was a lot of leaves piled up, and that looks terrible, but it's leaves. It's not like people's front no. lawns and whatnot. But I get it, but for the most part, I'm not talking leaves. So. Oh, yeah. It's right off of uh, Highway H, the first, I don't know, quarter mile in. It's, that's probably the worst part of it. Drive around again, please. Yeah. We'll take that. Right. Sounds good. Thanks. Do you, do you have to go over to Hebron right away? Do I have to what? Are you going from here to Hebron? Yes. Is that a call to them? Because we are concerned at our property as well. About the and that, that's a good question, too, because I brought it up as Blue Spring Lake, but I've seen it elsewhere in the community as well. Mm -hmm. So um, part, of the, part of the problem is that we had this snow thumb, and the, the ground was not even close to being frozen. That makes it tough. Mm -hmm. And then when you're talking the massive amount of snow that we got, you have to move it off the road, which means you're either going to wing it or you're using your main blade to push and you can catch the other road. 
or if, if the ground was frozen, frozen it wouldn't have a few inches. But I understand exactly what you're talking about, you know, and it's it's just the way the weather was, you know, in combination with the new employees. As long as you take care of it, that's great. Don't just focus on Blue Spring Lake to Mary Bess. Oh, no, no. Other, other there's, there's a couple other, other areas that I was talking about with Ron and that we have to take care of. So apparently Marsh Road would be one you need to drive on. There's Marsh and then there was a couple on Tamarack that we have to get out and take care of. Uh, uh, Diane uh, Road. Uh, to answer your, to answer your yeah, question, sure. please call us. That way, if there's some things we can... If anybody does have a concern, we well, can use a list and address. We'll be out there yeah. to take care of. We have good guys that can do that. So. Okay. Before the next snow comes, it would be really good. <laughs> well, your idea probably would be to, in the spring, go out and rake that out. Right? Well, we could do it, but if it looks terrible now, you know, there's, there's no reason why we can't go out there and try to make it better now. Right. So appreciate that. Thank you. But that's that's how it, how it <coughs> did happen, is because the ground wasn't really frozen, and it makes it tough. Mm -hmm. okay. We've got uh, later in the meeting trees issue with trees, what what do you think is the worst roads that need trimming? Give us a two, the top two. Short. Short bed. Because we can't go in there even with a small single axle truck and lift the box up and dump salt back if we have to do salt there. We, we clipped a uh, the cable. Yeah. Cable and, and took a couple branches down just on the one day going out there. There's a lot of trees. They're all close, and I know everybody wants they like the canopy of trees and this and that. But when it starts knocking two, three hundred dollar lights off of trucks and whatnot, it gets really depressing for the for the right. So that is bad. The other one would be um, Harlan Trail and Mill Road is really bad when it gets snow. Mill Road when uh, we got that <coughs> snow that we had. You couldn't even drive a pickup <coughs> truck down there that the branches were all that low from just the snow sitting on it. So it's it's a lot of light canopy work, but if, if we're going to be out there, you might as well do, if, if you want to do a five-year cut or whatever you want to do, you know, or we could just plan on taking small, some of the smaller stuff off. But that all helps. Obviously everything in time but it costs money. Oh, yeah. I can't see enough of what you did Marsh Road and uh, Tamarack. Right? Yeah, Marsh is really bad. <coughs> now it's very nice. Right. So. To the village limits, right? Right there. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Ooh, I, got, I got nothing from the fire department to do. Uh, Laura? Anything? No. No correspondence? No. I'll just let you know, I asked uh, Derek three weeks ago to make sure that that dry hydrant out at, on 59 is working. Every, you know, they easily can get in and out of there because we spent the money and leveled that all off. He said he'd have that to me by today. So I'll let you know that. Sheriff's to report. How things going on Tamarack Road, folks? Fine. I haven't seen too many trucks lately. I'll tell you, I was out there Friday uh, uh, with some tree problems, and uh, two semis went by. A Dollar General going into Felmire, mm -hmm. and another one went by. I was standing in Nansen's front yard talking to Dennis and, and Monica. And I kid you not, a car went southbound by me no less than 75 miles. Oh, that's not surprising, that part. Uh, <laughs> I did, trucks must be going by when I'm napping. <laughs> I, I did, I did, or Dennis was, well, were we supposed to call you or what? It's no, I'm, you got to call the sheriffs. I did call the sheriffs, and I let Monica and Dennis know that they were coming out there. And if they did come out there to let me know, and I haven't heard nothing. Uh, I did hear from your neighbor that uh, they were patrolling that road the other day. So. Oh, okay. I haven't seen them. Have you seen them? Yeah, two yeah, trucks sure. today. Yeah. Yeah, they was there? there today. Two trucks oh. went down there today that shouldn't have been there. <coughs> and the sheriff was out there today that 
we met on yeah. was that Friday. Yeah. The sheriff pulled out there on Friday, pulled two people over, gave out warnings. Um, the sheriff was there today right. and pulled at least one person over there. Well, see that? They are out there once Oh, uh, it's nap time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, well, thanks for that. Are you good with us? Then? Yeah, we're, we're good with you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. <coughs> Airport. We have the chairman of the airport commission, Al Bori, sitting here. Would you like to give a report on the airport of any kind? Well, we're going to have a meeting next month. We did not have one this month scheduled. Uh, we're planning on meeting with the uh, Wisconsin Aviation Department and the engineers uh, about some of the issues and concerns that we're having at the uh, with the up at the uh, infiltration ponds out here. And, uh, and that's about where we're sitting right Is that now. meeting scheduled yet? Yes. With the Board of We're, we're trying to get them okay. down. Okay. But you'll let us know when it is Yeah, scheduled. I don't have confirmation right. yet from them, but uh, I expect they'll be able to be here. Okay, thanks. Blue Spring Lake District. Um, Main item was the discussion with uh, Northwest Services. <coughs> Only other thing is we're having a quarterly meeting next uh, on the 19th. Mm -hmm. um, so I may have more for the next meeting after that. Building inspector. Um, we got one just after the last meeting, and then we got one today. So the last time we had three electrical inspections, two building inspections. <coughs> for a check of $727, and then tonight, today's uh, check was $315.50 for two electrical inspections and two building inspections. Any questions? Okay, emergency management plan. Uh, I did read in the paper, Kathy Weiss is hiding back there, isn't she someplace? <laughs> Where are you? There you are. It, uh, that the chief is coming up with a new emergency management plan for the area? Well, yeah, I mean, we need training, and you guys probably do too. We could probably work together on it. Um, he was going to look into it years ago, and I can't put a finger on it as to how long ago it was, quite some time. They had, you know, some online things to watch, and they were pretty meaningless, but it was our being trained and having gone, you know, looked at this was tied to our ability to get FEMA grants. Now, I have no idea if that's still in gold or not. It sounds like yes and no. I mean, and so Scott said he was going to work on, because, you know, it's not like I'm going to go out there if something bad happens. He's our emergency government person, right? Or you know, so he will be. I mean, together we can do things, but um, there's a lot of training needed, and our board is going to be a part of it. And so I can see if that's a possibility for you folks as well. I did leave him a message to keep me up to date with what was going on. So, other than that, I did speak to Donna Holgan who's kind of out right now, you know, and she's coming back. Um, she had some health issues, so she will be coming back shortly. So that's a good thing. Correspondence? Yeah, I had two. One from the Palmyra Eagle Community Band. Uh, thank you for your kind donation to the Palmyra Eagle Community Band. Your gift will help to bring concert band music to the Kettle Moraine area. We appreciate your support and hope to see you soon to see you at a concert soon. Um, and then we got a letter from the Jefferson County Board. Uh, on behalf of the Jefferson County Board and Solid Waste Committee, I want to thank you for your generous donation of $100 to our Clean Sweep and Recycling Program. By stepping up to the challenge to join our countywide partnership, you are helping to maintain a safe and healthy environment today and for generations to come. And then they did send electronically um, the new um, scheduled for 2024, and so I posted that, plus a new hazardous waste uh, document that they provided. So those are up on the website now. Yeah, I did receive uh, something from uh, 
Delmore Consulting. That has to do with the subject we'll talk about later. Did you get that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, anything else? Old business discussion and possible action on IT upgrades and services proposed by Tech Solutions. I've got one question. Every day is that computer backed up? Yep. What was the quote? How much was the quote? <coughs> certified um, identification and social security number to be able to apply for it and it seemed a little different than processes I was used to so I'm still working through the potential of the domain registration of the town so once that's done any of you have <coughs> more worried about the email, but we're going to get into that down the road. It really had to do with the emails and some of the stuff that's coming to us, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll get into shortly. So I guess we can just move on on this. So you want to table till next month or? Josh? Can you table it? Not we're not doing anything, is it? We're not doing anything. We'll just move on. Can I ask a question? Where does it get backed up? Is it backed up on the premises or somewhere else? To a cloud? Okay. And how often? Daily. Okay. Number two, discussion of possible action on the new contract with Jefferson County Humane Society. Motion to approve. Second. Motions are made to approve the contract with uh, the Humane Society. And a second, is there any further discussion? Yes, I wanted to point out um, last month we tabled this item for more information and thankfully we got uh, an email from Tom at Humane Society. Um, he provided us with a list of services that the town residents get. <coughs> um, we can post some of this, I think, on our website. Um, but things of note, is that for any resident that is in the town, <clears throat> one of the items that comes along with us contracting with them is that if you had a life critical situation uh, where you were no longer able to be at your home and couldn't find anybody to take care of your animals, you can contact Humane Society. They will come pick them up and uh, temporarily foster them for no additional cost. Additionally, uh, if you are looking to surrender an animal that you no longer can care for, you can contact the Humane Society and they will also take that animal, um, eventually hopefully find a new home for it. Uh, community cat program, I thought this was interesting. They provide to their municipalities um, a place for what they call working cats, where they trap, neuter, and release them. Uh, essentially back on your farm. So you go from the potential rabbit population problem to at least having working cats, but maybe not having two dozen working cats um, and growing. So aside from that, um, they did clarify how they pick up uh, or charge the costs to the town. And knowing that they do more than just pick up stray animals, I think we would be foolish to try to do it on our own. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 
this will be quick at uh, number three, discussion of possible action on the 2022-003 ordinance regulating engine braking on Tomeyer Town Roads. Tyson's order to signs will be posted on Highway H each end and on Little Prairie Road. There's a problem on Little Prairie Road with engine braking. We can't do it on the state road. Uh, the red tape, okay, we can do it, but the red tape is just phenomenal. Now, why we can go into E, you know, 59 across the county line, they have it posted and stuff like that, but here in Jefferson County, we just, it's, and I'd sure like to see it posted on 106 because we certainly use it to slow down and turn on coffees. But uh, anyway, that's what's going to happen. Signs are ordered, they'll be placed in a couple of weeks. Can we make contact with Tyson and the highway and bridge funds that we have through the county that have to be used by the end of the year we can use for signage? That's that done. Okay. He's been using it. In fact, when you bring that up, uh, that's been used up, hasn't it? Yeah, I believe we're... Um, now we're coming out of the regular budget at 4 Yeah, that we've right? used up what we had in that account. With the, with the, <coughs> there were like two projects of Colbert, maybe, and then something else that we did was a dominant lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. used up two kind of big chunks of it, and then the signs have used up the rest of it. Remember, a lot of signs on the uh, no through trucks up there. Anyway, that's it on that. New business. Number one, discussion on notice of non-renewal from Rural Insurance Mutual Insurance Company. Uh, folks, I'll let you know that he was invited here tonight, but he refused to come to answer any questions. He didn't feel he need, needed to come. Let's face it, it'd be a hostile situation. That's why he didn't come. But uh, I've reached out to American Family. I did send you a link that I just got this afternoon from that guy on other places that we can look for insurance municipalities okay. that should go to Rob and okay. Josh. That was late this afternoon. Um, has anybody else been working on anything? Been, yes, I've been getting information. I've spoken with Debbie Ball who's uh, working on some things for us, researching. Um, and this goes in with the second one as well. I don't know if you want to wait to talk about it. Point two, that the uh, rural has non-renewed us, so that's, we should move into number two. Yeah, right. We'll move to number two, discussion possible action on contracting with a new insurance company. Well, there's no insurance, no, new insurance company at this time. Um, what are the big concerns you have, Debbie? What type of questions? I know you're listed with several different companies and stuff, but what sticks out? What do you need to know? I have two municipalities, people that insure municipalities, totally. Um, and, and they will include the airport. One of the things that I think we're looking for, and I think maybe Rob might have it, or if he doesn't, he will soon, is whatever we have other than what the Chubb policy covers and or rural neutral. I think the airport also has some policies someplace okay, that you would know about, right? You have those. I emailed I email them to you. What was that? I emailed the airport policy to you. I only have the liability from Chuck. That's all. There's got to be something else running around out there other than that. Who sent those to that last time? My question, my, my, one of my big questions is, is we have this building, the building next door, and the meeting building. Who insures them? Well, we own this building. For $90,000. Well, that's what they feel it's worth. Or whatever. Well, this one, maybe this building, but not all three of them. No, we don't <laughs> own, uh, we don't own the shed next to us, do we? The airport garage? Who owns it? That would be on the airport, I would imagine. That's on the airport. Well, so that we, need to, we, we need to confirm all oh, of this. Oh, thank you. And one, I mean, it's a... It's a negative that rural has um, um, not renewing us, but I think also it could work in our favor from a standpoint of, I think we need to do a total assessment after talking to Debbie today, we need to do a total assessment of what insurance do we have that's not being renewed? Is it enough um, 
to cover what we need. Debbie feels from a comment, and we're, we're going to get try to get together this yeah. week in more detail, but that yeah. Debbie feels we have some holes in our coverage. So I think this will allow us to do a deep dive, find out what do we have, are there holes, what do we need, what will the cost be, and I would actually like um, you to Al to work with us as well, because um, yeah. I think now is a good time as long as we're going to do a, an assessment of where we're at. I think it would be wise for the airport to do the same thing, I would agree. to see if there's any holes there and where are there overlaps and where do there need to be overlaps, if any. So I think while it's not a good thing that they non renewed us, I think it gives us an opportunity to reset things and make sure that we're covered where we need to be covered. So, Yeah, I, I sit here and obviously we own this building. But the building next to us was purchased with a grant through the federal, federal uh, yeah. whatever, but then we had to pay the sponsorship fee, and back in those days, the electorate had to vote to build that building. So if it burns or blows away, who replaces it? On that note, I would probably say the town, because the sponsors... You're short. Yeah, back in the day, <laughs> which remember, I haven't come to these meetings in the last two and a half years, so many folks have been coming. We probably, now that I think about it, own that building. Yeah. And then the other one that we probably own would be that new tea hanger that's worth a million dollars sitting over there. As Rob, I and think, I as Rob and I talked about today, we need all those policies on the table so that we can see what you got and what you don't have. And I'm, I, I said this more than once, and it was long before you and I talked. I felt there was a hole big enough you could drive a truck. Yeah, and, and I think we need to define for sure ownership of these various buildings. Well, yeah. So, and who has responsibility for insurance? Exactly. Ultimately, the airport is the airport commission is there. The town owns the assets. If those things burn to the ground, there's like I, from a financial standpoint, there is airport funding and town funding. But from an ownership standpoint, the town is responsible for. The land, the buildings, you know, the leases, all of that is an ownership of the town, again, prescribed by statute to have an airport commission run the day-to-day -day of that. But my concern is that if we got non-renewed because there was an airport, that was the rationale and about the only explanation that we got, is that I think we need to make sure whatever group it may be that we're going to have insurance through, number one, knows damn well that we've got an airport and all of the assets that go along That's with that. Sure. But I, I, quite honestly, I don't understand <coughs> historically <coughs> for decades but how the town of Palmyra, I shouldn't even say that, the airport commission has its own insurance policy. Policy. Like it's not. It's. Why are they having their own? The whole thing sits in the township, is and that's all why I want Al and the commission to be part of our discussions on the insurance, so we can figure out what's the best way to do it. Because I mean, if, together, if, if you get to the point where you've got where you've got property in the open, and we're insuring property in the open, and so is the airport, we're both paying for it. If you could increase that policy by twenty thousand dollars, you know, it, like. When you get, I'm not sure what, what you've talked about, but when you get into municipal insurance policies, you can insure more for less rather than everybody having their own. I agree, you know. absolutely. So, so you're going to continue to work on this with mm -hmm. Debbie and when, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Up to you and then. Do you want it to be you or you want to appoint somebody to work with us? No, I'd like to work with okay. you. Because I like to know what coverage we've got too. You know, I keep being told that we have coverage, you know, from the airport manager, but I've not seen a policy. I'll tell you right now, if a tornado went through here right now, I don't know what in the city hell would happen. We we need to. That's one of the things we need to do is make sure we have the policies so we can review them. Yeah, and then that way we can review them. According to Laura, I know I have the policies for us. <coughs> the town. Yeah, there's a um, business that
than the workers' comp. Yeah. Which you're going to get. And your, the liability is there mm -hmm. oh, yeah. of some sort. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have to so B or you the airport insurance. It's a liability policy that I was talking about. Oh, it's okay. not it, it wasn't anything more than an employee. There's no <coughs> property or equipment insurance or building insurance. Yeah, it's it's a liability. liability. And the problem is with that when I talked to the gal who does these and does Whitewater's airport, she said, I hate to tell you this, but property that is not used for an airport, like the eighty acres sitting out there, is not covered. Insurance. It's not covered. She was very specific about that, and she she writes just a few of these. So, yeah. Well, it, it, it's covered for liability. No, it's not covered for anything. Well, how do you cover it? You're gonna have we're gonna have to figure that out. Who owns it? You own it. The town owns it, right? Correct. Okay. Well, that's not going to be on that. Most likely, it's not going to be on the policy. Airport. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Couldn't you check with the register of deeds with the county? To see, well, it's all the exactly. deeds are all on the town of Palmyra's name. Yeah, like that—that's oh, yeah. that's yeah. my point. Is that okay. the <laughs> the leases are run through the airport commission. The equipment has been granted through the VOA, but ultimately, mm -hmm. when you're insured, yeah. you, get, okay. you, you have to have an insurable interest. And in my opinion, the only insurable interest is the town. Now, you can split the premiums any way you want with other people, but I don't see anybody else having an insurable interest. Right. We need to, yeah, this needs to be figured out, obviously, before the 11th of April. April. But, but I think I'll, I'll agree with Rob that this might be a good thing because... I think we were really open to some big exposure or something that were to have happened and, and still I, could have. And I have an issue with rural, not just for not renewing us. They might be doing us a favor, like I said. But if there truly are gaps like this, how could they let us have gaps if they're really yeah. Yeah. insuring us? Just and let you go on. But that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's water. That's, exactly. that's, that's the dam. Saying. We own yeah. the dam. we got to move forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going we're gonna, to... My hope is that we really do a deep dive on this, Al and Deb, and, mm -hmm. and come back at some point before April 11th. We would definitely have to have a special board meetings, I would think. I mean, <clears throat> the good news is, is any policy that, that gets written at this point forward, the insurance company is likely going to want to know what's inside the building, likely know what the inside of this building is, well, and, the, and on and on and on, you know, and not just write them I'm, of, I'm concerned. I, I may have misunderstood you, but I thought I heard you say none of that equipment's insured. Over there. I'm concerned about it. You, so got, you got a truck on a piece of on a policy right now with Rural. Your truck is on it. Well, is where's the rest of it? Yeah, where's the tractor? Where's this? I, I, I think, let me see if I said that I'm saying it correctly. I, I only thought I saw one piece of equipment. Mm. At, uh, 2011 Ford F550. Yeah, it's the black one. Well, okay. um, <coughs> there is no, there is no inland marine here. There is no schedule of. So they didn't insure the bobcat. The bobcat's not even insured. Then. The bobcat's not even insured. Is it on the other policy we'll, that we don't have? Anyway, we will get this fixed. <laughs> and Deb, thank you very much for yes. your right. efforts, Al. Thank you for. Oh, working with us. We'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. Okay. So yep. are you going to table that then? Um, motion to table it until the next, meeting. Or the next special board meeting. The next yeah. available town board meeting. <laughs> Motions made. Second. A motion and a second to be made to table uh, item number two until the next <coughs> special town board meeting. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number three. Discussion of possible action to amend the reserves set for the sale of the Bobcat detachments at January 8th, 2024 town board meeting. Well, you can split. 
want to explain the first part of that, Josh, why we're sitting here, why we do that? Yes. Um, after last month's meeting, when it got approved, I reached out to Wisconsin Surplus, gave them all the photos that we had, descriptions, sent in the paperwork. Um, shortly before they were going to post it, I got an email back from them that was suggesting rather than selling all essentially four pieces of equipment, the bobcat, the bucket, the plow, and the blower, um, as one lot that we split them apart and put the bucket with the bobcat and then sell the plow and the blower separately. So if someone has a, has a <coughs> bobcat and they want a blower, they can buy a blower and what have you. So, motion that was made last month was to set a reserve for the Bobcat and equipment at $59,950, I believe, um, which didn't really allow me, the leniency, to be able to split them apart because the reserve was for four, not for one. So uh, went back and looked at the invoice from the original purchase and prorated the reserve against all of those initial purchase prices. So I would make a motion that we amend the reserve to sell the Bobcat and the Bucket uh, for $52,350 minimum for the snowblower.